In this video, we're going to compute this line integral. So let's go ahead and do it. First, let me give you the formula that we're going to use. So the formula is the following. So we have the integral of f of xy ds over our curve c. And this by definition is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x of t comma y of t times the square root of x prime of t quantity squared plus y prime of t quantity squared dt. So this is the formula, and I think that whenever you're doing these problems, it's always a really good idea to write down the formula uh, first. Um, that way you know exactly what you have to do. If you have the formula in front of you, then you can just easily plug everything in and take your time. So the first thing we have to do is find x and y. So we have to find a vector valued function that parameterizes this circle. So this is a circle of, of radius 3 centered at the origin, and we're traveling around the circle from 3, 0 to negative 3, 0. So we're going from, it's a terrible picture, from here, let me just, let me just draw that again. Um, so we're going... Uh, from here, here's 3, here's negative 3, so we're going this way, okay, and we're going this way, counterclockwise, it says. So, to parameterize a circle of radius 3, r is the square root of 9, which is 3, we can simply use these equations, x equals 3 cosine t, y equals 3 sine t. This will give us the entire circle. So, we're only going from 0 to pi, so our t here will go from 0 to pi. And you should always check whenever you create a per parameterization like this. If you plug in 0, you get 3 times cosine of 0, so you get 3. If you plug in 0 here, you get 0. So you do get 3 comma 0 at this point when t equals 0. And at this point, you get negative 3 comma 0. Let's check. If you plug in pi here, you get 3 cosine pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so you get negative 3. If you plug in pi here, you get zero, so you're here. So in general, to parameterize a circle of radius r centered at the origin, you can just use r cosine t and r sine t. It always works uh, every single time. Okay, now we need the derivatives as well, so let's go ahead and compute those. So x prime, uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this is negative three sine t, and the derivative of sine is cosine, so this is three cosine t, good stuff. All right, now let's plug everything in. So this is equal to the definite integral from, well, we're going from 0 to pi. All right, that's our a and our b, 0 to pi. And now we have to do this. So what this basically means is we have to plug these into the function. So this, this is our f of x, y in the problem up here. So we're basically plugging these things into this. So x is this. So we plug that in, we're going to square the 3. So we'll get 9 cosine squared t beautiful stuff, I'll put it in parentheses, plus, and then we'll get 9 sine squared t. So this is 9, this is a really nice problem um, because it works out nice. <laughs> this is the best problems in the world, uh, the ones that work out nice. And then same thing here, now we're going to plug these into this formula here. So this will, you square this, you'll get a 9 again, so 9 sine squared t, the negative goes away because it's being squared. Same thing here, 9 cosine squared t dt. And you might already see it. Uh, some beautiful stuff is going to happen with the nines. So now what you can do is you can pull out a nine here. So you get nine cosine squared t plus sine squared t. It's the best part of the problem because <laughs> it goes away. The same thing here, pull out the nines. So you have square root of nine, square root, sine squared t plus cosine squared t. Eventually you can skip these steps because they're so clear. It's always better to show your work though. Uh, you know, if you're doing this for like a class or something, show all the work, it's really key. This is zero to pi. This is just one, right? So you just get nine times one, so you just get nine. This is just three. This is the square root of one, so it's one. So you just get dt. So we get the integral from zero to pi of 27 dt. That's an ugly two. When you integrate 27, you just get 27t. We're going from 0 to pi. As always, you plug in the top number first, so you plug in pi. So you get 27 pi, subtract, and you get 27 times 0. So you simply get 27 pi. And that would be the final answer of the line integral. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.